Hey everyone, Michael Short here. Come on, let's go outdoors. And indeed, we are outdoors. So it's a real pleasure to introduce Trapper Simcoe. He's a conservation officer based out of the Athabasca area. And uh, Trapper, what are we doing today? I mean, it's it's a gorgeous day out. What are you hoping to achieve? Well, basically, I like to check out this area. Um, it's a natural area. And a while ago, I found a bunch of garbage that was dumped here. So basically what I do is whenever I'm in the area, I like to check it out to see if someone is still dumping garbage. And I want to determine if it's a regular thing or if it was a one and done thing. Yeah, so there's a little garbage bag there. Someone looks like they dumped. Um, it's kind of all I see for now, but we'll check that out. On the way up, we were talking about natural areas, conservation areas, um, all falling under the Land Use Act and, and Crown Land. Yet there are many definitions within the Crown Land which allow people to do different things. And you put it so succinctly, you said you wouldn't go to a foreign country without doing a little research on where you're going. Exactly. And then the same holds true to when you come to a Crown Land. There are some activities that are allowed and others that aren't. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so one that's a really good point, Michael. Thank you. One of the things that uh, I notice on a regular basis, and it, it seems like people just are unaware. So I like to educate them. And, and from an environment enforcement branch, we're obligated to be not only enforcement officers, but to help educate the public. And the Alberta government does a wonderful job with that. Um, I do this on a daily basis is I go to alberta.ca forward slash crownlands. From there, you can determine your trip, where you're going, what do you want to do. So hypothetically, let's say we land up at Bridge Lake here in natural area and I want to go camping with my family. Um, I know I can, by looking at the regulations, I can drive my OHV, I can camp. And then there's some things we have to worry about. How long can we stay and destruction of land and all those things. So this is kind of a unique situation. At, right at this intersection, right there we have natural area. Right here, we have agricultural leased land. Right there, we have crown land. And right there, we have privately owned land that's farming. So that's a perfect example we were talking about earlier is knowing where you're going, planning your itinerary. If you want to use your OHV, where can you use it? In this situation, you can use it here on the natural area and you can use it here on the crown land. If you want to use it on the agricultural lease land, you have to get permission from the leaseholder. And once again, privately owned land, that's all up depending on what they want to do there. So. And I guess, Trapper, when it comes to Crown land, um, there are a number of items that apply, doesn't matter whether you're in a natural area or um, a leased land, there are certain things that just cannot take place on Crown land. Right. Uh, one of the common things that we see, there's, there's roughly five things that keep coming up. Um, there would be the 14 day stay, staying longer than 14 days, unauthorized structures, uh, wheels in water, so OHVs are driving your vehicle in, th in or through the water, um, destruction of land and leaving waste behind. So those are the five things that keep coming up and they're pretty standardized across all of the, the chunks of land that you're gonna go on. Now, I don't wanna put you on the spot, but I, as, at the top folks, I did introduce him as Trapper Simcoe. That's not because he is a trapper, that's really your first name. Yeah. Obviously you come from a background where this kind of outdoor lifestyle uh, was really important to your folks. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's it's definitely in my blood, so to speak. Kind of grew up on the little house in the prairie, so to speak, wood burning stove. We didn't have a furnace, uh, and I just kind of started at a really young age, going in the outdoors, exploring. Um, if I wasn't building forts and trees or doing things in our backyard, I, I was somewhere else. So it's very, very passionate about my job and what I do. All right. Well, well, what an amazing day. I can't thank enough uh, the Conservation Officer Branch, uh, the folks out of the uh, Fort McMurray and the Athabasca office for allowing me to come out and spend a day with them. Uh, just a real hoot. And, and I hope that you, you get some information about the types of work that these folks are doing out here. It's not just writing tickets and, and that type of thing. It's really about public education and, hey, we've got rules, we need to live by them. And, uh, you know, it's good to know that there are trained uh, folks uh, like the Conservation Officer Branch out there uh, looking out for our public resources. Um, if you would like more information on licensing, Alberta Realm, uh, My Wild Alberta are the go-to places uh, to get all sorts of uh, information before your next trip into the outdoors. As always, folks, stay safe out there. Till next time, I'm Michael Short. Come on, let's go outdoors. Now I got to get this machine back up. <laughs>